All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeremy McLaughlin, and I'm the chair of the Special Interest Group for Arts and Humanities, uh, SIG-AH, here at ACIST. On behalf of my colleagues in SIG-AH and SIG-VIZ, the Special Interest Group for Visualization, Image, and Sound, and on behalf of ACIST in general, I'd like to welcome everyone to the second day of our virtual symposium on information and technology in the arts and humanities. Uh, this morning, we're going to uh, do a quick recap of yesterday, just to discuss some of our um, introductions and um, some of the things that we discussed and, and uh, some of the presentations that we heard from yesterday. And then we're going to move into um, the schedule for today. We've been working on the symposium for quite some time, and uh, we're happy with the turnout, um, the response that we've gotten, and the RSVPs for one or both days has been great. Uh, we had people coming in and out throughout the symposium yesterday, and I expect the same today, but what you're looking at here is just a map of where we received RSVP from. So. Uh, you can see we covered a majority of the states in the U.S. and several countries. Um, we also have someone joining us quite early in the morning from uh, the University of Hawaii in Manoa this morning. So uh, thank you for coming. And um, we're really happy to have everyone. And um, welcome. As I noted on the previous slide, uh, the symposium is being hosted via the San Jose State University Student Chapter Collaborate Room. So thank you for that. We're also co-hosting today uh, SIG AH and SIG VIZ. So I'd like to invite uh, Christina Matusiak, the chair of SIG VIZ, to take the mic and introduce the SIG and herself. Christina. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on what time zone um, you are. It is really a great pleasure to welcome you to the second day of symposium. I think we have a very productive day uh, yesterday, and we are looking forward to the presentations uh, today. As Jeremy mentioned, I'm a current uh, chair of SIGVIS, and I think we also have in audience a couple of past chairs of, of SIGVIS. Um, and this is a group of researchers and practitioners really in interested in exploring different dimensions of um, visual resources, and that includes not only still images, but also audio um, and moving um, image both with sound and without sound. Um, and we are interested in um, exploring organization, classification of those resources, as well as um, um, information seeking, discovery, uh, and use of visual uh, resources. A growing area of, of interest is also information visualization. I had an excellent presentation yesterday by Michelle Chen on um, applying information visualization technique and Tableau software into analyzing um, um, art objects. Um, so I think this was really a pretty unique um, uh, presentation on that um, uh, topic. So again, on behalf of SIGVIS, I'm, I'm really happy to welcome all of you. And we're really happy for the cooperation with SIGAH. Uh, I think there is a natural affinity between the two um, SIGs in exploring uh, visual resources in the context of, of um, humanities. Um, and I would like to see probably more balance in, in uh, those areas between textual and non-textual uh, resources, but I guess that's for discussion. So again, welcome, and um, I will turn it to you, Jeremy. Great, thanks. Um, yeah, the collaboration has been uh, fantastic between the SIGs. Our SIG, SIG AH, Arts and Humanities, um, sounds pretty straightforward in terms of, in terms of the disciplinary approaches that we cover, um, but we are very cross-disciplinary and um, very broad in general. Um, so we do work with a lot of the other SIGs, and um, we really look at the applications of information and technology um, by arts and artists and humanists, but also by information and professionals and understanding artists and humanists. And um, yeah, certainly I think we can develop some things out um, looking more on the viz side in terms of non-textual um, and, and things like this. And uh, certainly we'll be looking to explore that um, 
possibly at the annual convention. Um, I did just want to also quickly answer um, Arjun's question about will this symposium be archived? The answer to that is yes. Um, we'll be working on a couple of different things in terms of archiving the presentations, um, as well as putting together some sort of a proceedings, um, bringing together the student papers um, that will be that were presented and uh, will be presented today, as well as some of the other content. Um, and uh, if you're interested in being updated on that, um, Arjun, I know you're already signed up, but uh, if you use the RSVP form that was on the symposium website, I will use that to email updates when the um, archived content goes live and is accessible. So if you would like those updates, please feel free to sign up there, and we'll be happy to, uh, to notify you when that material is available. Um, I did just want to reiterate um, what Christina has said about um, uh, membership in the SIGs. Uh, you see the link there. If you're not an ACIST member, um, I'm happy to inform you that uh, there's been a new sort of rule passed that uh, in the past ACIST members could sign up for one SIG with their membership and could pay to join any other SIGs after that. Um, but they've changed that this year, so all ACIST members can sign up for as many SIGs as they would like when they um, become a member or if they are existing members. So please uh, do join ACIST and sign up for SIGVIS and or SIG AH, uh, we would love to uh, have you and uh, to hear your ideas. So I'm very, very, very briefly going to recap a couple of things from yesterday, just uh, in case there are some folks joining us for the first time today, and it looks like there are. Um, we uh, began the day by an, with an introduction from Sandy Hirsch, who is the current president of ACIST. Uh, Dr. Hirsch really focused on the importance of involvement by students, especially in various research projects. Uh, she also spoke about SIG collaboration and um, the importance of events, virtual events especially, like the symposium um, for our membership and bringing together folks to discuss ideas. We also talked about how we planned the symposium, some of the themes that we were looking to explore, the topical areas such as those uh, Dr. Matusiak just pointed out um, around visualization images and sound, as well as some of the general areas in um, arts and humanities. And so why information and technology? Why were we collaborating with SIGVIS and SIGAH to look at arts and humanities and visualization images and sound? And I really focused on the third question of why now? Why did the symposium, uh, why did we want to hold it in the spring of 2015? Why is it a, 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 an important topic for us to discuss? And I went back to a great analogy that I've seen in the literature, especially related to digital humanities, which uh, goes back to the field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. And folks like to point out that um, when it comes to information and technology in the arts and humanities, the question really is, if you build it, will they come? And who are they? What are they there for? And how can we increase that traffic? How can we work more closely with humanists to understand their needs for information and technology so that we can build those digital communities? Um, I spoke of a general sense of um, what I call uncertainty, but uh, tempered by a, a big amount of hopefulness that leads me to believe that we haven't quite yet reached the golden age of information and technology usage across disciplines in the humanities. Um, Christina mentioned uh, Michelle Chen's presentation, um, looking at semantic analysis and data analytics and visualization of artists. Uh, we also heard from Perry Collins at the National Endowment for the Humanities about new funding opportunities that, uh, not just in the digital humanities, but for humanists and artists um, across the board, especially around collaborative projects. Um, that, of course, wasn't Everything we heard yesterday, we also heard from three of our student research paper finalists. And so now I'd like to invite uh, Christina to take the mic again and uh, talk a little bit about our student paper award and um, the presentations. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, we discussed this a little bit yesterday, but because we have new um, participants joining us, I just want to recap that, that uh, the student presentations um, emerge from a um, paper competition, um, and the call for um, papers was uh, issued um, in, in February. And we encourage participants from really a broad range of disciplines. Obviously, uh, library information sciences is one of them, but we also encourage participants from arts, humanities, and, and computer 
uh, science. Um, the theme of the uh, uh, student contest was pretty open-ended, and we invited uh, participation from really a variety of theoretical and empirical perspectives. So we had some original empirical research. Um, in uh, the uh, submissions as well as, as more theoretical um, reviews of, of topics. Um, from the uh, paper competition, and we received seven uh, uh, submissions, five uh, finalists uh, were selected, and the papers, again, went through a blind peer review. We had a panel of five uh, judges um, evaluating and ranking those papers, so the presentations that uh, you have an opportunity to um, listen to at the symposium were selected in, in, in that uh, process. Um, we are sort of in a second phase of, of evaluating and ranking. Another independent uh, panel of judges is evaluating uh, the student presentations, and then we will sum those, those rankings. And as a result of that process, we will select uh, two um, winners, and, and SIG AH and SIG VIS are sponsoring um, um, uh, awards for those uh, finalists. So we um, had three presentations yesterday. Unfortunately, one of our finalists is not able to attend today. So we have one more um, today. And this will be a presentation by Melissa Higgins from the University of Denver. Jeremy, I think we can now uh, turn to Great. Um, yeah, it's been very uh, exciting bringing in the student uh, paper competition aspect to the symposium. Um, and it's really helped to round out uh, the topics and the themes that we've been able to discuss. Um, so I wanted to just look at the schedule for today. Um, we're right on track in terms of uh, our start and um, moving into our first presentation, which will be from Stacy Kunkel at Altmetric. Um, as uh, Christina pointed out, one of our student finalists for today, unfortunately, um, is not able to attend. Um, so we will only have one student finalist um, presenting during that 2.15 to 3 o'clock time frame. Um, I invite Melissa to um, talk as slowly as she possibly uh, would like to. Um, we certainly don't, uh, aren't going to try to extend out your presentation um, too extensively, but um, uh, we certainly are going to have a little bit of time in the middle there. So perhaps we'll try a discussion. And um, we may just take a, a quick break. Um, we do have a, lot, a long uh, set of presentations in the afternoon. So we'll, we'll deal with that as it comes. But did just want to point that out there. Um, and again, we, if you need to uh, come and go, please feel free to. Um, I have built in Q&A time into each presentation um, block so that we can have direct Q&A with, with each uh, speaker. After Amy Rudersdorf this afternoon, um, I'll be doing a quick uh, wrap up, and uh, we'll then open it up for general Q and A and discussion for any of the speakers throughout the day, um, or to discuss any of the themes or topics from the two days of the symposium. So we do have Q and A built in, um, but certainly everyone can feel free to type questions in the chat box during anyone's presentation. Uh, Christina or I will be moderating and keeping track of questions to ask the speaker. Everyone can also feel free to take the mic um, during the Q&A session if you would like to uh, interact with the speakers that way. So um, have a really exciting um, and busy schedule for the rest of the day today. And I'm going to take just a quick pause while I upload the slides for our next presentation, and then we'll get moving forward. So give me one quick second, and we'll get going again. Thanks.